Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about who the voice was for the Kanemit, the gigantic alien creature from the episode To Serve Man from the Twilight Zone. Now this video won't just be only about that individual, but a little bit of that individual's work. Hogan's Heroes fans will enjoy it as well. If you aren't a Patreon member and you do want to have exclusive content, more Rick 9 g stuff, there are links in the description below. Also, you can find playlists to other videos. I have close to 1,300 videos that you can watch, even ones that I've made years and years ago that if you haven't seen them, I think you will absolutely enjoy. Now starting with the episode itself, To Serve Man, this was probably one of the most recognized and well-known episodes from The Twilight Zone. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely do yourself a favor and see it. It is on Netflix currently as this video is posted. But to summarize the story quickly, it's very simple. We began to see a man who is on a spaceship. He was taken basically hostage there and he is going to be served for dinner or for lunch. But the thing is, we don't know that in the beginning. We begin with a peaceful society and all of a sudden alien contact is made. The alien beings come and you see them huge, nine foot tall beings, nine foot tall men, and they do have a unique way of communicating through telepathy. And that's where this actor comes into play. If you don't know his name, you may know his face. His name is Joseph Ruskin. Now Joseph Ruskin was a very interesting individual because of course he had a very unique face, a very unique voice, and in my opinion a very distinguished Earth it would be 12 noon actor. He was also in one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes. I don't see many people talking about it, but I do believe it is one of the very best. It is up there. It's called The Man in the Bottle. This is the one where of course you have this older couple who owns this second hand shop and they're down on their luck they're not doing so well and they find this genie bottle they of course accidentally rub the lamp and out comes joseph ruskin as the genie of the lamp he grants them these wishes but they're very interesting because they always get the couple into trouble in some way it comes a show the moral of the story that the grass is greener on the other side it's a wonderful episode and one that they asked joseph about now, before I get into that, Joseph was the voice of the Kanemit in the episode To Serve Man. It's really interesting to hear him in that voice. Many people think it's the actor who plays the actual Kanemit, and that's not true. That's actually Richard Keel. Now, many people mistake Richard Keel for Ted Cassidy from The Addams Family, and that is not true. Now, they used Joseph Ruskin's voice because it was very unique. And now speaking a little bit about both episodes of The Twilight Zone, he was also in an episode of Hogan's Heroes. The episode is called The Gestapo Takeover. Now in this one, the heroes try to prevent the SS from sending Klink and Schultz to the Russian front. It's actually a very good episode and Joseph does an amazing job in it. He is, in my opinion, one of the best SS officers ever, of course, other than Hochstetter, but he is amazing, his face, his vocal intonation, everything is perfection. Now moving back to the Twilight Zone, he was interviewed about the part in Man in a Bottle and he said that he did have a lot of rehearsal time. He loved working with Luther Adler who was basically the main man cast in the episode, the older gentleman. According to him, he was a small G god in his eyes. Certainly from many actors who admired him, it was his pleasure to be in this episode. He also states in the interview that for him this position as the genie was pretty much just a job. It was nothing out of the ordinary. He never knew he was going to be in something really special. Now when he did finally watch the final cut of this episode, he said he was highly impressed. He was in fact surprised. The rhythms that Don, the main actor, put into the actual episode itself impressed him very much. He was very pleased and Joseph said he was even moved much better than he thought he was going to. He went into the story and he thought, wow, this is something better than what I thought we did. It was a great rhythm and a quick one to make and the climax was perfection. Joseph also told us that the entire episode was pretty much shot in less than two days. Most of the scenes were shot in one day and a few extra ones on the second day. 
He says he doesn't even remember what the wishes were that the character asked for, but the last one, of course, was to turn in to Schickelgruber. Well, that wasn't his wish, but that's who he turned into. It's a very comedic, but kind of dramatic part in the episode, and it comes to show that sometimes what we wish for isn't really what we wanted. It's really cool to note that it also affected Joseph in a profound and very interesting way. I hope you like this look where I tie different actors from different shows together and show you a little bit more into who they are as individuals. I want to highlight them because, of course, I don't want their memory to be forgotten. Let me know what you think. If you have seen these two Twilight Zone episodes, which one do you like? Do you not like them? Why? Let me know in the comments down below, and maybe you have seen that Hogan's Heroes episode. We'll see you next time, and don't forget, guys and gals, be hopeful. Thanks as always to all the Patreon supporters, especially the executive producers for this video. Andy B, David D, Ricky, and Joe R. Thank you so much to everyone.